Hello guys. So NEET PG exam just finished today. Uh, it's a big relief that even for us, it's a big relief that the students NEET PG exam got over today because it is one of the most toughest times in the life of an undergraduate. I remember during my days when I was going to give the exam, there was so much anxiety inside me. And when I came out of the exam hall, I had a big smile on my face. Ki, Finally, this is over. I don't care what the result comes, but my job is done. I gave my 100%. I gave what I could. I gave what I could. I gave what I could. I gave the exam. Now I'll wait for the results. So first of all, pat yourself on the back that yes, you did a very good job. It was a very difficult time for you. You went through a lot. Lot of emotions were inside you throughout this preparation journey. And be relaxed. The anxiety is finally over. Okay. In today's video, I want to discuss with you the radiology related questions which came in the NEET exam this year, NEET PG exam. And uh, some of them might have some overlap with other clinical subjects, especially orthopedics, especially gynae, especially surgery. But my main aim is to not tell you the exact question because the wordings of the questions might change and the options might change. Take it as a video for you to recall the topics that you have to study because previous year topics are the ones which you should focus on and previous year topics are the one from which the questions are asked. The questions can be a little bit here and there, but the topics remain the same. So, us topic ka you have to read completely. Okay. So, the first question that we'll discuss, I think a lot of students have uh, told me that this was the image that was given in the exam. It was a 60-year-old male. So, it was an elderly patient with uh, alcoholic and enrolled in an alcohol dependency program. So a lot of story was built up around it and uh, he had a history of fall followed by confusion disorientation. So even from the history we see that there was not a very significant trauma or trivial trauma in an elderly. So clinical background of an elderly patient with a trivial trauma and this was the CT which was given right. So the CT shows a hyper dense bleed. So it is an acute bleed in the left uh, frontotemporal region and what is the shape of the bleeding so the shape looks like maybe it is a biconcave it is a concave or convex but the more important point is that it is crossing these sutures here it is crossing these frontotemporal sutures so crossing of sutures we know that edh does not cross sutures so edh is out it is an fth the answer was fth so as we all know, the shape of the hemorrhage is not very important. But there are three things when it comes to acute cerebral hemorrhages, acute brain hemorrhage. So first is crossing of sutures. Crossing of sutures is a feature of FTH. FTH crossing of midline. Crossing of midline. So for example, if there was a bleed here, it, if there was a bleed here and it was crossing the midline that it that is, it was crossing the Fox cerebri. The answer would be EDH because FTH does not cross this midline. And the third important point is whether the cisterns are getting filled or not. So any bleed in the basal cistern, if it is Sylvian Fisher uh, bleed, FTH, EDH, it does not involve the cistern. So the cistern involvement is a feature of SAH. Okay. So since the suture was crossing, the answer here is a subdural hemorrhage. Moving on to the next question. Now, I don't know whether this is the exact image uh, that was provided, but I think a lot of students have told me that there was an opacity here uh, adjacent to the right heart border. So many of the students, this is have confirmed that the right heart border was obscured. Border was obscured. And so what have, are we talking about? We are talking about the silhouette signs and this is one of the favorite signs of all radiologists right radiologists love talking about silhouette signs now silhouette sign is a very important sign for you to localize where the consolidation is and right heart border obscuration tells that the consolidation is in the right middle lobe right if the same consolidation was obscuring the diaphragm the dome of diaphragm then the answer would be the lower lobe especially the basal uh, segments the anterior posterior medial lateral segment if it was obscuring the diaphragm but here the answer will be right middle lobe because the right heart border is getting obscured okay so we'll move on to the next question so there is some confusion which image exactly came some of the students are telling that the image 
had a tumor in the distal ulna. It was a big tumor, cystic tumor, and was reaching till the articular surface. So, what do we see in the image? So, it was an adult. A lot of students have told me, that, yes, sir, it was an adult. It was a skeletally matured skeleton. So, answer here would be a GCT. Why? Because an expensile lytic lesion reaching till the articular surface. Reaching till the articular surface. This is the buzzword. So, in an adult, in a skeletally mature skeleton. How do you tell whether it's a skeletally mature skeleton or not? So, this is an image of ABC. You see that the uh, growth plate is seen separately and you can see the epiphysis and the metadiaphysis separately. So, this is a skeletally immature child. And if this was the option given, if the image was like this and the tumor was below the growth plate that is in the metaphysis of a skeletally immature child, the answer would have been ABC. But a lot of students have told me, he said the answer, uh, the image given was like this, the tumor was reaching till the articular surface in an adult. So, the answer here would be GCT, right? So, next we move on to this image. A lot of students have told me, sir, ki the shepherd crook deformity image was given. And uh, we all know the shepherd crook deformity is seen in fibrous dysplasia. So, this was not maybe the exact question that a 20-year-old male presented with limb shortening, multiple swellings. But yes, a lot of students have told me that, sir, in the option it was given that multiple skin lesions were also seen. Okay. And this was the x-ray which was shown. So, it, this x-ray typically shows the imaging features of fibrous dysplasia. Okay, so ground glass matrix involving the proximal femur showing a shepherd crook deformity, right? So, this is the buzzword. And what would be the multiple skin lesions in a case of fibrous dysplasia? They would be cafe or lay spots. And if there are multiple FDs, if there are cafe or lay spots, if there is an associated precautious puberty, yes, we are talking about McCune Albright syndrome, right? So, multiple. It is a triad of cafe ole spot, polyostotic fibrous dysplasia, and multiple endocrinopathies. Multiple endocrinopathies. Okay. So let's move on to the next question that was asked. So uh, I think this is a very, very favorite topic uh, of PG entrance exam. It has been asked again and again. And rest assured that one question will be asked each and every year, be it INI, CT, be it NEAT, PG, right? So to a 25-year-old male, I think patient did have a right flank pain. And a lot of students have told me that sir, sterile pyuria was given in the question. And this was the x-ray image. So yes, the answer here would be a urinary TB and a putty kidney. So this is an image of putty kidney. Remember this image, okay? This is the favorite typical image of a putty kidney that is asked. There are these big, big homogeneous oval round calcifications present in the dilated PCS and these are the calcified caseous material. So, we all know TB shows caseous necrosis. So, over time, long standing that caseous material gets calcified and it is known as a putty kidney. Okay. So, remember for putty-like calcification to be named, their size should be more than 1 centimeter. Okay. So, we move on to the next question. A lot of students have told me, sir, there was an image of a skull and there was a uh, swelling in the scalp and the bones were intact. The bones were intact. There was this swelling and the in history it was given that this swelling is present since birth and the child is now 2 months of age. So, what will be the answer here? Yes, the answer will be cephal hematoma because we can see that it is limited by some sutures. So, cephal hematoma will be the answer here. Capitrexidinium first does not last for such a long time after birth. It resolves uh, soon and the uh, swelling crosses the sutures. Encephalocele will have a defect uh, in the bone and so will have a leptomeningeal cyst will also have a defect in the bone. Okay, so we move on to the next question. Uh, I think a lot of students remember that this was the image of the patient given. It was a young male with the low back ache history and students were saying that, yes sir, the image shows a bamboo spine. So, this is the bamboo spine, the fusion of the adjacent vertebral bodies and the dagger sign which was shown. 
dagger sign is the calcification or the ossification of the interspinous and the supraspinous ligament. So these are typically seen in ankylosing spondylitis. It is one of the favorite uh, arthritis spondyloarthropathy of the examiners and you have to have to remember all the signs with their clinical images. It has been asked again and again and again. Okay. So next uh, we move on to this image. So there is a bit of discrepancy about what the exact image was. What I recall from the students, students are saying that sir, there was a left orbital swelling. The history showed had a history of RTA road traffic accident two years back. The patient had a RTA two years back and there was a history of right proptosis. On CT, the orbital cavity showed fullness and this was the approximately CT that was given. So here we see that uh, there is this fracture in the roof of the left orbit and there are some contents which are seeping in. Okay, so what could be the likely cause in a history of RTA with the fracture at the roof of orbit? You'll think of an encephalocele. Pseudotumor usually will be present in the lateral part of the orbit and there will be no history of RTA. There will be no fracture that you'll see on CT. JNA does not typically involve the orbit in isolation. Yes, it can, but its main location is in the pterygopalatine fossa, it can secondarily invade into the orbit, but the main location is in the pterygopalatine fossa. Now, the frontal mucosal, I don't know whether this was the option that was given or the image that was given, but frontal encephalocele will be a more proximal image. The CT image will show a frontal sinus with some uh, cystic swelling or an enlargement within it. So, I think the most common answer or the best answer if this was the image that was given will be a encephalocele. All right. So we'll move on to few images, uh, which might not be asked typically from radiology, but I think there was uh, one patient, one history that was given that a patient had fever and on ultrasound or a CT, there was a lesion seen in the liver. So if this was the image that was given, yes, we see a very well-defined cystic lesion with these crumpled membrane-like structures within, within it. So what is this? Yes, this is a image of a hydrated cyst, hydrated cyst and I think the next line of management uh, was asked or the which organism causes it. So we know that echinococcus species are the one which uh, causes it, echinococcus multilocularis is the typical organism which causes a hydrated cyst and in the treatment from radiological point of view what can we do? We do a pair. Okay, percutaneous aspiration, re reinjection and aspiration that is done. So, this was an image of hydrated cyst showing water lily sign. Okay, this is a companion case. This is a companion case of a liver hydrated showing these multiple small water cysts within the large cyst. What is this sign called as? This is called as a honeycomb sign. Okay, this is called as a honeycomb sign. So, these are the signs associated with liver hydrated. All right. So we, we move on to the next image. So there's some confusion regarding what the exact image was, but there was an image of a frontal radiograph of knee and a skyline view, skyline view of patella. We know that the view of choice for visualizing patella is skyline view. And there was this cortical breach which was seen in the patella. Now, if the uh, image showed this sclerotic margins. If it was located on the superior lateral aspect, the answer would be a bipartite patella hair. But if there were no sclerotic margins that were present, it, if it was a clean cut, the fracture was like this, the answer would be a patellar fracture. Okay, and remember in bipartite patella, parpartite patella is usually asymptomatic. You don't need to do anything else. However, in a patellar fracture, the next, the best. Uh, management would be a tension band wiring. Okay, we move on to few of the images. Uh, these were asked mainly in some other subjects. Maybe Shad, this is the question asked in OBS and Gynae. And there was a patient on infertility treatment and had acute pain abdomen and his ultrasound was given. And this image was shown of an ovary with so very large and showing multi, multiple, multiple, multiple cysts within. So yes, this is an image of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome okay ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome okay so we move on to the few of the questions i am not able to recall the exact 
a question that were asked and maybe these will be covered in your subsequent subjects of uh, pediatrics and uh, something else but just a radiology related review would be there was a question that was asked in which there was a tumor bleed on ct and an in associated infection was asked so hsv encephalitis is a hemorrhagic encephalitis and if that if an infection is associated with a temporal bleed the answer would be an hsv encephalitis the most common location of involving hsv encephalitis is the temporal lobe and the specifically the insular lobe okay so there was i think one question about pancos tumor in which the sympathetic plexus involvement was there and there was another question in pediatrics in which periventricular calcifications were asked or given so there was no image i think given of a periventricular calcification but if the if there was a question associated in a child with the uh, antenatal infection showing now showing a periventricular calcification so the answer would be a cmb encephalitis okay cmb encephalitis this was all about the radiology recall uh, questions that i could get off uh, we'll post another detailed video of the total radiology recall that uh, have been done but my main idea was to give you the important topics and the first impression of what the questions about radiology were asked and remember these previous topics are very very important because they have been coming during my time when i was a pg aspirant i also remember these were the exact questions or the exact topics which i read during my preparation and it is a good idea to take a little slow take today rest relax today go out with your family go to a restaurant have a good food talk to your parents talk to your girlfriend talk to your boyfriend relax for for today you have done what you could now you just have to wait for the exam results to come in and meanwhile after a day or two it's a good idea to pick up again and start preparing for INICT which is upcoming in may because earlier what used to happen INICT or AIMS PGI had very very few seats uh, to overall as compared to neat pg but since the opening of a lot new AIMS INICT also has a lot and lot of uh, pg seat and the good thing about INICT is that there is no bond which you have to serve so prepare well for INICT uh, focus more on the first and second year subjects when it comes to INICT it will be heavily laden on first and second year and uh, i wish you all the best thank you very much